Welcome, everybody, to the Road by Road Garden Show, the best dead gum garden show on the radio and internet. Glad to have you this evening. We got uh, another special guest here this week. Got Miss Hoss on here. Hello. We're going to deep dive into a couple subjects tonight. Uh, first one is going to be our product of the week. We're going to deep dive into it, and then we're going to do a quick rapid fire question and answer session. So it's going to be a good show, and uh, let's talk about some weather updates and garden updates. We had Saturday, last Saturday, we had pretty good storm roll through here. Bad and, uh, storm, bad storm. Yeah, rocked us with some pretty good weather. We got, man, I think we got four and a half inches. Some of our neighbors got as much as six to seven inches. Had some hail around. So it. Uh, I seen some pictures of some potatoes that probably got hit a little hard. Everybody, I think, come through okay. There may have been a couple of people that took some damage, but it was pretty rough. Had a cold spell. Mm-hmm. Had to get out of the winter clothes. Yep, so had a little cold spell last week. You guys up north from us was really nervous about what was going to make it and what was not. And as usual, most of these garden plants, especially these potatoes, are more resilient than we think they are. So most people come through that unscathed. And it always reminds us to wait for that cold, last cold snap rolls through before you get out here and plant your, uh, plant your summer garden. We had a little bit of hail, but yep. our squash did good. Yep, yep. Uh, wind, pretty pretty mm-hmm. heavy wind, but everything came through pretty good. You know, it reminds me when that corn gets up and starts to tie. So we always get one of those storms that comes through here and blows your corn over. It seems like it happens every year. Every year. So, uh it's just part of garden. It's part of what you have to deal with. It's all, not all pretty. Sometimes you have to deal with the ugly there. But we all make it through there, and it reminds us that Mother Nature's always teaching us a little something. Yep. So well, another thing on the gardens, we got our bees in this week. Um, bees are a necessity for the garden. I have to bring bees in to, to my garden. They also service your gardens. We yes, have a his do. and her garden. So uh, we brought the bees in, a couple of bees last week. And, uh, you know, we should do a show on bee strategy in the garden. because we I actually, I actually, and I didn't realize this until I was walking around in the garden today, but I have a strategy for my bees that I, I, I've implemented and I didn't realize what I had done until I really got to think about it. So maybe for an upcoming show, we should do that. And I do too. I have all the flowers, the zinnias yep. in my garden. Yep. Stock update, we're getting better and better every day on our stock. Uh, we hope to have a few cedars before long. Cedars has been really a, uh, a thorn in our rear end trying to get them up going. And i tell you the reason why. It takes one little small component to throw the game off. And we've seemed to have a handful of these components we couldn't get our hands on, and uh, it's getting better. Now, I'm not saying we're going to have an adequate supply for the rest of the year, but it seems like we're going to have a batch that we can uh, put on the website here shortly and uh and maybe get some of y'all supplied with cedars i know it's going to be late we're just simply doing the best we can wheel hose on the other hand is going to be is going to be full fledged back in stock here probably as we air this video if not a day or two after so we're looking real good on getting all the wheel hose back in stock and having adequate supplies we're looking pretty good on pest control products with the exception maybe one or two um Fertilizers, we're looking pretty good on. We're looking pretty good on everything except for maybe maybe one or two things out there. Seeds, we're looking pretty good on. We just got a new shipment of uh, another shipment of peas in. Zip uh-huh. peas. What about those running butter beans? Got some of those in. Oh, wow. Christmas yep. llamas. The things. Christmas llamas. And we didn't think we was going to find any more of those. We got lucky, found a few more of those. So we got a limited supply of those back in. You know, Mother's Day is right around the corner. Mm-hmm. We've got a gift basket, a gift box. Yep. So I'm going to show everybody. I think I showed this last week, and I'm going to do it one more time. We could put a little, the girls put a little collection together on the gift box. Yep. Okay, so you get you get the garden planter. You get a nice cabbage knife. You get some organic fertilizer and a nice satchel. And this is an over-the-shoulder type satchel. And you get an herb garden collection right there. And I think this one's what, $59.99, something like that? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So there's a good uh, a good gift for that mother on Mother's Day. And you know you need to be thinking in advance on that. You know I what? think you have 13 days. You know how you all are, including me. You wait to the last minute and they run out there and want to do something. Mm-hmm. 13 so. days. Get it while you can. Another great, uh, if your budget does not uh, include a $59 gift, maybe something a little bit less, or you want to, 
add something a little special to you, Mother. How about this pollinator garden collection? I find these, what, nineteen ninety nine. And what's in there? Yep. Oh, yeah. Let's show, Let's show them what's in there. Yeah. We got the chocolate cherry sunflower. Oh, that's my favorite. I'm going to let you pronounce that one. Adjuratum. Adjuratum, which is a good one. Marigold Sparky Mix. Very good one. And the Dwarf Zinnia Mix. I just planted some of these in my garden just over the weekend. I've got a bunch planted in my pots. Cosmos Wildflower Mix. No, excuse me. Sensation Mix. And Bachelor Button. And a Zinnia Cats Mix. For $19.99. That's you a, get seven packets of flowers? Uh, I think whatever it is. Yeah, seven. Yep, makes nice a nice ten. Nice ten makes a nice little gift for mother on Mother's Day. Guarantee you should be happy about that. All right. So our product of the week. Well, before we do that, let's do a little show yeah. and tell on the garden thing. Yeah. How about that? Some of you may have saw on our house tools my uh, Sunday morning gathering. Um, this is the green griller. This is the eight ball, which the one I showed was a lot bigger than this. And we actually fried it up last night. It was awesome. Um, this we kind of stew fried with some onions. Really good. Yeah, it's more of an oblong. They look, as far as color wise, look real similar. But this one, let me get this color right here. This one's more oblong. And that would probably do better if you slice it, as the name implies, griller. So you could slice it down the middle there and it would lay flat on your grill, which would be a good one for that. And you could stuff it as well. Now the eight ball, this one's a little bit, that one's going <laughs> run away in it. The eight ball, uh, now the one we had kind of got a little big on it. Yeah, it was really big. You can see in the pictures if you go back and look on house tools. Yep. So we floured them and salted them and fried them mm -hmm. in some peanut oil and they were really good. However, I prefer them about this size right here. That's pretty much a perfect size. You know, we had one big one, and it fed four people. It did. Yep. So there you have it, folks. There is your green eight-ball squash and the green gorilla squash. That's okay. I have a corny dark. joke for you. A corny yeah. joke? A corny joke. All right. Why did the squash go to the gym? Oh, why did Because she's getting ready for her zucchini season. Ha, 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 ha. Zucchini, bikini, I guess that's it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Corny joke of the week. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I may start that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's dig into the product of the week. And, you know, we have done, we've talked about this a lot. This product, and we're going to talk about the Roselle again today. And the reason we're going to talk about it today is because it's time now to be planting Roselle. And maybe we can inspire you to implant this one. Now, let me first tell you all a little bit about how this come about. I, one of our customers actually sent us these seeds a couple of years ago, and I, I didn't even know they existed out there. We planted them in a trial garden, and they really did well. And we were just, I mean, so excited. With so the, excited. With it was one of the back. best things we planted last year. It was. And, uh, you know, everything that we plant in the trial garden, necessarily a winter. I mean, I had some peas last year that I just knew were going to do great, and they just didn't. So uh, just because we planted it in our trial garden doesn't mean it's going to do great. We, we we picked this one out. We really enjoyed it because it was different. We could do different things with it. It had a different growth habit, and uh, it was just amazing to kind of follow along with it and to learn as we went along what all the benefits were. Well, it was, was gorgeous. Yep. I used it in some decorative arrangements. It was fun to gather, it was fun to process, and it was fun to use in all the different recipes. It was just really exciting. Yeah, and it's, as you mentioned, it also could be used as a great ornamental plant. And these yeah. things get pretty good size, mm -hmm. so you would want to plant them out there where have a little bit of room. We'll go over a little bit later about how you need to plant them. But, I mean, if you wanted to plant these simply as a, uh, an ornamental, I think it would be. A, it would. It was very pretty. Very pretty. Just got to understand it it's gets pretty big, so you'd want to put it in a place where it has plenty of room to grow. It has kind of a pinkish, whitish bloom on there. Of course, the red uh, after the, the flowers, you know, what, what do you call this thing? Calyx. Calyx on the outside is a bright red color. So it does have ornamental benefits as well. Now, we prefer to use it as a edible. Mm -hmm. 
And now we just planted these last week. Let's start off about the way we plant them. Now you can direct seed them or plant them from transplants. We have done them from transplants. I planted these on Friday. Now I did soak them overnight. Soak the seeds in water, just straight water. I soak the seeds in water butter, over water, Thursday night. Buttermilk or water? Just water. Just water. No buttermilk. Just water. Okay. <laughs> um, planted them Friday afternoon about 3.30, and Sunday morning they were up and almost 100% here. Yeah, I see you got two. And some more. I did plant them two to a thing because ahead. I thought it would be easier to uh, of mine. Uh, yeah. thin out. Yeah. I wasn't sure about how they were going to germinate, yeah. but... Um, you could definitely plant one to a cell. This is our 24 cell seed tray, and I did put them on the germination mat, and I had the dome over them for the first um, couple of nights. Like I say, I planted them Thursday, no, put them in water Thursday, planted them Friday, Sunday they were up. This is what they look like on Monday. Yep, all right, good deal. And we'll get leave these in there. We'll hit them with some fertilizer pretty quick. And then we'll. Uh, well, I was thinking about putting them under the grow light here in the office. Well, we can, unless you don't want to put them in the greenhouse. That's fine. Put them in the grow light, and then we we'll still hit them with some fertilizer. Yeah. Yep. Okay. They'll be ready to plant for long. Now, I will tell you, those are going to be 24 plants right there. Here's what the seed packs look like. That's a 24 pack, and uh, one person probably doesn't need all those 24 plants. So you could share some with your neighbors or your friends or your family or whatever. Uh, I would probably recommend them. Plant them about three to four foot apart, somewhere in there. And I think a 10 to 15 foot row. Best, we had about 15 foot last year. We really had too many. It was plenty. So I think yeah. a 10 to 15 foot row is plenty for the homestead, for the average homestead. So, uh, you know, if, let's say if 10 foot, three foot apart, that ain't four or five plants. So really about 10 to 12 plants is a gracious plenty for you. Now they're going to get about seven feet high. At full maturity, and you're going to need at least three feet spacing. Give them some room to grow. i got a snack for you. You do? Yeah. So this is the Rosella jam that I did actually last year with some cream cheese. And you can actually snack when I talk about it. So actually, this is made from the... The actual, I took the leaves and actually um, ground them up. After not, not I the leaves, the, the I mean the calyx. Yeah, yeah, the calyx off the flower mm -hmm. or the seed head, I might say. Now, you can use the leaves as a garnish in salads. It has a little bit of a spicy taste. We did not. I, I tasted the leaf or two while I was out there, but we didn't actually partake in No, we didn't. But I think this year we may. Yeah. 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 It's kind of a little spicy, like the if you put it in a salad. What you think? So, like I say, our experience growing it last year, it was just fun. It was exciting. It was fun to grow. It's fun to gather. Um, it was fun to process it. Um, I love, I didn't love this growing up, but as I grow older, I love shelling peas. And this reminded me of shelling peas. Um, you take the calyx, calyx, mm -hmm. and you slice it and peel the leaves away from it. Then rinse it, put it in some, a little bit of water, and then boil it for about 15 minutes. And then you can make cold um, drinks, hot tea, um, wine, uh, jelly, jams. Um, it's just unlimited what you can do with it. Um, this is, the rosella is part of the hibiscus and the okra. Okri. Oak Creek family. Oak Creek family. Um, it's actually the family mallow family. It's in the mallow family, and it takes uh, it takes some heat. You know, we've had some people posting on uh, on, on our Rover Road group, I think, about this right here, and they talk about length of day for it to bloom. Mm -hmm. I actually think not only does it is it take a certain length of day to make trigger it to bloom, but also Heat units. It takes a certain amount of heat yeah, units. Yeah, yeah. It is. To, um, it's a tropical plant. Well, it's native to Central and West Africa. Now it's widely grown all over the world, um, typically in warmer, humid climates. Tropical climates, yeah. Tropical and um, non tropical, too. Sub yeah. Subtropical. Subtropical, yeah. Climates. It does well here. 
um, you initially have a flower and then it displays the characteristic five petals, funnel shaped tooth. The margins are tooth. Tooth? Uh huh. It, it's jagged. You know, jagged, like oh. a tooth. Um, there's many parts to it. You've got the seeds, you've got the leaves, the fruits, and the roots. And you can use this in various foods. Um, now, some people actually roast the seeds and eat them. We didn't do that. No, we didn't do that. Um, the fleshy red calyx are, is the most popular part of the plant to use. Um, it also has many medicinal uses, too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, back in the uh, people that are aware of what we call the Florida Cracker Homestead back in the day, that's some of the original settlers of Florida. This was widely grown by them, and I guess they used it in all these benefits as well. Yeah. It reminds me of cranberry juice. It's a little tart. Mm -hmm. And when we serve it cold, we actually added some honey and some lemon juice and coconut sugar. Yep. Um, Three can, to four months to grow it somewhere in there. So if you plant it as soon as your soil temperature gets 65 degrees, and then it's going to take three to four months, and it's going to start putting on the uh, the flowers and the blooms and everything come toward the end. Well, I think we got it in October, wasn't it? We so, did, October. October. It's, October. Well, we started the end of September. Um, and one of the things I made with it this year is this Rosella wine. I started it in October, and it's now ready to bottle. Um, very impressed. I'm going to yep. let you taste it. Okay. Oh, 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 now see, ah, hold, on just, me. hold on just a minute. So if I'm going to drink your Rosella wine, then you're going to have to drink my milkshake. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, no. I'd rather drink the wine. Yep. No, you're going to have to drink my milkshake. So I've been drinking this right uh -huh. here, and uh, I thought you have not drank any of this, but I thought you would enjoy this as well. So give you a little bit. This is, <laughs> this is what we call the DE milkshake Ooh. right here. You drank this on. I drank this on a show, but this is very good for you. It looks like it's, mud. Well, it's, anyway. Oh, look at this. Yeah. What's it going to do to me? Well, it does numerous things for you. It's, it's known for its health benefits, just as this wine is. So this wine right here <laughs> has got antioxidants in there. This helps clean your system somewhat. And uh, if there's any parasites in there, it may help kill some of that too. There. Oh. Yeah, I thought, you know, as long as we were sharing here, we were sharing. <laughs> you didn't know this was coming. This, did you? this is a little love love here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So there we go. Let's do a little toast. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. It's just to smell it. What does the DE milkshake smell like? It, it doesn't, it smells like dirt. It tastes like dirt. Yeah. So while you partake in that, I'll. Uh, 60 to, I mean, excuse me, three to four months uh, maturity on this right here. So you got to have a long growing season. I think you can grow it fine, zone seven, uh, eight, nine, ten. You guys in six and down, I'm just not sure you're going to be able to grow this. It is a, uh, a warm weather crop. I don't know if you're going to have the length of time to do that. So you get to grow garlic, and uh, we get to grow rosella. It's just a trade off we mm. have to make. Room. Much better. That's, that's yours. Right? No, no, I'm going to pass. Yeah, I need my wine glass. Yeah. Okay. So it's often called sour tea. Um, it's tart. It reminds me of cranberry juice. Um, like I said, it's used for hot and cold beverages. Um, we made some jam with it. It's really good on some uh, cream cheese. You can use the leaves for salads. Um, it's great in flower arrangements. Um, because of the anti-aging properties, you can also crush it up and use it as a mask for your face. Wow. Yeah. Take that uh, good DE milkshake here and you'll have lived mm. to be a ripe old age. I think I'll pass. Um, you plant it in April to May. Like I say, we just planted this last Friday and it's already up. It blooms as the day shortens. It can grow seven to 10 feet tall. So you need plenty of room in your garden and you need it in a space that you're not going to want to plant something else like a fall garden because you're going to be gathering it till October or until the frost comes. Yeah, it's very now, sensitive to frost. One thing I did notice as a drawback to it, it has a very woody stem on it, and it yeah. is hard to get rid of. So it's going to take you a little while to get rid of those stems. I actually took my 
uh, mower there, my flail mower, and hit it and chewed it up some. I'm still having a good bit of residue where it was at. So don't plan on using that spot for a good four to five months after you plant it there because it's going to take a while to get rid of it. I mean, it grows a huge woody yeah, stalk. Yeah, I did try to plant it in some pots, but it requires a lot of water. It gets very root bound. So you have to water almost every day. Yep. Tea as well. Yeah, tea as well. Um, I actually have some tea for you here. You have some tea for me? I do. Um, now, the way you make the tea is with a combination of? I use the, I actually dried some of the fruit. The capsicum. Capsicum. Calyx. Calyx. I have trouble with that. Calyx. Okay. The so, red part. How so this that? is in a tea infuser. Um, and what I do is just simply add some hot water. You don't have to wait on this a minute. Um, we add some native honey. We add some honey. You can actually see some of that tea milkshake on that spoon there. Oh, you might want to clean that off. Okay. And I added some coconut sugar. Let's start up. And anytime you have anything that's deep red color, as we have on these petals right here, you know it's just full of some good vitamins, and yeah. antioxidants, and things like that. The benefits of it is high antioxidants, which it helps fight off radicals, which now causes right damage to cells. It's rich in ascorbic acid, your vitamin C, which is always good, boosting your immune system. Um, it's high in calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, vitamin B12. Um, it has some diuretic properties. Some of the studies, which I'm not sure how legit they were, um, it aids in lower uh, lowering of blood pressure, mm -hmm. your um, cholesterol, triglycerides. Let's just say it's just plain good for you. How about that? Just plain good for you. It also has some anti-cancer properties. So, folks, if you're interested in trying something new this year, I would highly recommend the Rosella. Now, another one that we tried last year, we may need to do a little more in-depth on another show, is the Vine Okra. That is a great one, too, mm, that, uh, that we enjoyed last year. But this Rosella, it was just a, it was a monster in our test garden. It uh, didn't take up a lot of room and gave back and gave back and gave back. I mean, we, heck, it was weeks we got fruit off of it. Yeah. Let me talk about how to process this. Okay. So what I do is I take it and I chop the end of it off and take the flower away from the seed and then wash it. And there is sometimes a little problem with some mealy bugs. Um, so wash it really well. I put it in my salad spinner and get the um, water out. Put a little bit of water in it, bring it to a steam, then to a bowl for about 15 minutes. That's then, how you get the tea extract or yeah, the jam extract. Yeah. So I let it cool. Once you let it cool, you can make jam. We put it in the fridge for, we kept it in there four to six weeks and drank it as a cool tea. Um, I dried the flowers to use as a hot tea. Um, and then I also, once I processed it and let it cool, I used the juice to make the wine. We've got 12 gallons of wine that's ready to bottle. And then very good. All right, Rosella, folks, give it a check out. And if you're interested in being a little adventurous, I think you'll enjoy it. A great, great product to grow a crop, to grow on the homestead. It has so many benefits and uses. Let's get into some questions. Now, what we've got here is some questions that we got off our YouTube channel. But it also, we might have added one or two in there that the girls always seem to be getting on the customer service line. Mm -hmm. So you're going to shoot them to me and we're going to do our best to answer. Maybe this will help you on some of the generalized ideas of the most common questions that we get. How about that? All right. Question number one. What would you suggest putting DE down when planting around the base as a preventative? If you're having problems with cut worms or uh, something constantly, a worm that constantly gets up there and causes havoc, I think it'd be a good idea to do I wouldn't do it if I did not have a history of a problem there. But if you're doing having a history with cut worms and uh, other worms that feed on your foliage, it's definitely it would be a good thing to do. It'll kind of take care of them before they get there to do their damage. Okay. That was from Robin Walsh. Mm -hmm. Okay. From Hawkeye, Texas, 549. Um, what does spinosad and BT do to earthworms? Very friendly to earthworms. 
And that's the great thing about our organic line of products is they're earthworm friendly. So spinosad BT has no adverse effect whatsoever on earthworms. And if you don't have earthworms in your garden, you should have, and you should have the common goal of getting along with those earthworms and growing up a healthy earthworm population in your garden because they offer so many benefits to your soil ecosystem. Okay. From Gary Smeltz. Yeah, Gary's down in Florida. Yeah, he posts quite often. Um, how soon can the corn be sprayed after it's emerged, and what do you recommend using? Well, your corn can be sprayed immediately after it comes up. However, what I normally do is wait till I get some damage, or if I get damage. Now, these have been certain years I got damaged when it got knee high, and I'd go out here and start spraying. If I start seeing some eating the leaves of my corn, I will go on out there and get me some spinosad or some type of pesticide properties on there to knock those worm population down. But when it gets to that tasseling stage, is the most important time to get the pesticide application on there for that corn earworm. That's that little worm that gets into your top of your mm -hmm. ear, your corn, that you don't want in there. So, we didn't have much of that last year. No, it is season. Every season is a little bit different. Some seasons is worse than others. But, yeah, we didn't have much problem last year. year before that, we did have a problem. Yeah. Okay, from Leland Rents, I have a three-fourths acre garden. What fertilized system would you recommend? Well, this is a good one we get a lot of times is people know what kind of fertilizer, how should I fertilize this? There's basically two, two trains of thoughts out there. The old school train of thought is we use a dry fertilizer and you side dress. You put a pre-plant out there and you side dress to everything. With today's technology, we have other systems out there. And the system that I have used with huge success is implementing before I plant as a pre-plant a good liberal application of compost and or some type of manure. Now, that depends on what you have. If you have chicken manure, if you have horse manure, anything like that, do a generous application of that, work it into the soil before pre-plant and inject in our nutrients through the drip tape it's become a very valuable system to us because we can put out there as we need it and, uh, and it works well. So what I do is a good pre-plant application of a bulk product and then I feed them a drip tape. Okay. We have another question from Leland. It says, "Why will your planter plant peanuts? Yes, it would. It should plant them fine. Uh, our planter does great with any seeds that are round and consistent and, and peanuts are that. So it should, should plant them fine. Tell you something else that it'll plant fine that I didn't realize to just a few days ago. Centipede seed does a great job on centipede seed. So maybe some of those things out there that you didn't wear or wear it does a good job on, but anything that is round and consistent, it does the best at. And, and peanuts definitely fits into that. Hmm. Um, Ron Rasmussen. You, I butchered that name. I'm you just saying. Name on them names. Um, how deep do you set the drip tape? Help me understand. Do I put the drip tape between the row or directly in line with the row? Yeah, it's kind of uh, kind of not good. You defeat your purpose to put your drip tape in the row. We like to put the drip tape down and plant either on top of it if we're doing direct seeding or plant right beside of it. So, you know, they are. I've seen some people do these permanent beds where they put the drip tape down there and maybe let it bleed over in there. But it works best, in my opinion, if you plant directly on top of it or you plant directly inside of it. Okay. From David Carmichael, when is the best time to plant okra? David's one of our friends up in Tiffany, Georgia. Okra. 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 okra, as as we talked about with this Roselle here, and I think Roselle, if I ever have another daughter, I'm going to name her Roselle. What do you think? Mm -hmm. we have it means daughter? rose. Rose. Mm -hmm. rose. Roselle's a pretty name. Isn't it? it is pretty. I hope you don't have another daughter. Well, it's getting a little late, David. <laughs> So okra, as well as roselle, are in the mallow family, and they need 65 degrees soil temperature to germinate. And you know, here in Georgia, and pretty much all through the southeast in zone 8, we have reached that pinnacle. So now I think you can get your okra in. And, and you planted yours last week. I did plant mine last week. Mm -hmm. Everything that I looked at, we're pretty much in 70 degrees soil temperature, uh, except for maybe one little piece up in North Georgia. Those still have, have some problems. But pretty much the state of Georgia is... Uh, have, even with a cold snap? We even have the cold snap. We, we have warm enough soils now. I think we, we just have to go with the, uh, okay. the okra and the roselle. Okay. From Linda Georgette, I'm in zone 8B. I planted elephant garlic I bought from Haas. When I, can I expect to harvest it? Soon, if you're in 8B. So normally about two to three weeks after I gather my onions, my, 
my elephant garden gets ready. When you see that stem turning brown and it's starting to fall over, it's time to get it out of the ground. Now, if you know you're having a big weather system coming in, it's going to be wet for several days, you may want to get a little ahead of that and pull it because it doesn't do well to sit out there in those wet soils once it gets to maturity. But if the uh, weather is all good, I like to pull my elephant garlic when that gets nice and brown to the top, it's brown, starts falling over. I like to pull it, I like to lay it on top of the ground for a good day, nice sunshine, let it dry a little bit, then take it and put it in storage. So you should be getting real close on your elephant garlic so, in 8B. So, sort of like you do your onions. Yeah. You pull it, yeah, let it dry, right. store it. Okay. From LJR, I have some leggy watermelon seedlings that I didn't catch in time to give enough light. Once I have finally caught them, I was able to stop the leggy growth, but they're still quite long. Do you recommend planting deeper or at transplant to remedy the legginess? No, I don't. Watermelons is one of those things uh, you don't want to plant deeper than the soil level that they are. Now, things like tomatoes, you can get by with it. Tomatoes is one of the... Uh, it's one of those things that are, it's not the ordinary. You can plant your tomatoes real deep, but those watermelons, you want to plant them soil level. If you plant them too deep, you're asking for trouble. So the best thing to do, and I had something got a little leggy on me as well. Mm -hmm. If they get leggy, plant them as soon as you can out there in the garden and let Mother Nature straighten them out. And what kind did you plant this year? Baby dolls. Just baby dolls. Just baby dolls. Just baby dolls. Okay. And the number one question, which I think you already addressed, when will the cedars be in inventory? Yeah, I hope uh, I hope we're going to have some this coming week. And uh, we're not going to have a huge supply, but I hope to have some this coming week. And then probably be uh, two to three weeks after that that we have another batch. We're going to have these things in short batches, look like, for a little while until we can get caught up. So, so. they'll be in inventory and out of inventory. Yeah, probably so. Probably fighting that battle again. Okay. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, maybe we have inspired somebody to grow rosella this year, to grow mm -hmm. something out of the ordinary. Awesome. And uh, and enjoy some of these things that you wouldn't normally grow in the garden and maybe enjoy them in a little different way, making jams, making jellies, making teas, making wine, if that's your thing. So there you have it, folks. Hope you enjoyed the show. Check out our Facebook group, Row by Row, if you have not. It's a great great community to be a part of and to learn from heck man they even post some amazing pictures on there some of these gardens these people have awesome. are just absolutely amazing uh, our buddy jimbo out in texas post posted his zinnia field the other day and i just mesmerized me just sit there and look at it but some of these pictures and what these people are doing is absolutely amazing so great pictures worlds of advice so join the row by row if you're not a part of it and thanks for joining us. I have a toast. You have a toast? Okay. Yeah. To the elephant in the room, Travis. He has started his own marketing company and his own um, YouTube channel. We wish him the best. There's no ill feelings. He's moved on. We've moved on. We're going to keep the show going. Um, I was going to wait till he got his uh, website there before well, I mentioned it. We'll, but yeah, he's working on a new website. And when he gets his new website, that we'll, do a, we'll do a link on there for that yeah. for y'all. He started a digital marketing channel, which is actually his love. It's what he enjoys he doing. He enjoys. So um, he'll get that up going. We'll post a channel there. If any of y'all have digiting marketing needs, that you can get in touch with mm -hmm. him and go from there. We wish you well. All right. So get out there and get dirty and enjoy this great spring and the sunshine and all the great weather. Cheers to get dirty. Cheers.